good first day of pads to get out here. We'll repeat um, being in full pads tomorrow and get a little bit more live action, a little bit more live tackling, have our refs out here and get some more red zone work. As you saw today, a lot of the focus was really on the tight red zone from the 10-yard line and in both in seven-on-seven seven and in a scrimmage-type setting right there at the end. But that was our situational mastery today. <clears throat> we'll come back and, and kind of see where we are in practice six, put the ball down and, and work field, full field zone and do a little bit of red zone uh, with some live tackling. So should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, where we are now that we've got most of the installation in. Um, injury wise today, uh, Josh Fallow got a lower, a lower body injury. We'll see how it is. Um, uh, going to get an MRI on his knee and, and see where it's at. don't think it's major, but uh, we're going to check it out. Uh, Wale had a kind of a turf toe uh, that we uh, held him out uh, after complaining. He complained about a little bit, and then James Tolan got a groin today that we pulled him. Uh, with that, I'll take any questions that you got. What do you get from the, uh, the virtual reality camera behind the quarterback now? What do you see? Maybe that you didn't get to see before. How's that working for you? Yeah, it, it really works twofold. One is the ability with the headset. When you put on the headset, it gives you a peripheral view from a quarterback perspective to see the entire field from ground level rather than basically from a, a crane uh, at a higher position. So it gives him a realistic look at what he's seeing. and when you put the headset on you can move your head either way to be able to see what's on that side so it is true virtual reality i also like it also for the running backs and the linebackers you saw uh in our 907 period it'd be on the defensive side so now it gives the linebacker his views to be able to read key keys especially in a two-back setting to be able to read fullbacks be able to read hat uh hat placement of offensive linemen and give them some nice keys. So um, it, it's really helping us out twofold, uh, to be honest with you. Running backs, linebackers, and quarterbacks. Uh, Clancy talked about how Daniel Harris, he wishes he had 11 of him on the defense. <laughs> what do you think that uh, Danny brings to the defense? Um, he brings such football instincts. If you remember, he was an offensive player in high school and an offensive player for us when he started out. So, you know, his just football knowledge is evident. Um, is he the biggest guy? No. Fastest guy? No. But does he produce? Yes. As good as anybody on the field. And I think a lot of it is from his football instincts of knowing the knowledge of the game as a whole, both offensively and, and uh, defensively. Even, even the last two-point play that we had with him coming off the edge, for him to know that here here comes motion, the back's offset to the field. Here comes sprint, and you saw his reaction. He played it exactly perfect. You know, that's that's knowing what to do in that particular instance, and that's what you want. You want football smart guys. The defense over the first week has had a number of interceptions. Is that normal for them, or are they doing something that you're encouraged by? Uh, really, the last two, the last two practices. This was actually obviously a lot better day. There were none today. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, yeah. So we had the last two practices uh, really. Quarterbacks not checking the ball down a little bit, um, and, and today I thought they did a lot better job of addressing it, and you saw a lot more check downs, and I thought a lot better decision making. Uh, anytime that you throw that many passes, especially in the red zone, and do your job, protect the ball, and protect the points, I thought they were a lot better today. How does uh, John Houston's athleticism give you a different look at it? Yeah, you, you know, one of the things that I think him and Jordan bring to the table, that athleticism to be able to cover a slot into the boundary. We play so many three and four wide teams in this league that um, that athleticism to be able to walk out of the box at any time and be able to wall a slot receiver off as well as play in space is valuable in our league. You know, we you don't see a lot of 21 personnel or true fullback teams other than Stanford. You see a lot of spread teams. So that, that athleticism athleticism is important you know we match personnel a bunch putting putting a JNA uh, out to the field but you got to remember you're still covering a slot in the boundary and that's where I think John's uh, John's advantage is early on in this time here he was, he was injured and then yeah. he, he sat a little bit mm -hmm. how did he stay kind of in it yeah, I commend him. You know, he, he gets redshirted his freshman year, really has that back issue. Last year, not, not only gets healthy, but gets confident. And if you remember, he was a huge factor for us on special teams. And now you look up, he's a redshirt sophomore in his third year um, and really getting his chance to be a major contributor this year for us. And proud for him because uh, he just he stayed the course. And, and 
not everybody does it happen, you know, your first year. Things happen, maybe an injury. Maybe the light doesn't come on for you. But I commend John in the fact that he just tried to get better each and every day. And you look up and he's two years in as a redshirt sophomore with three years to play here and really in the right place and doing a nice job. Have you had a guy that can get to the boundary like he can? And Is there somebody that... Um, job? I, mean, I, I tell you, him and Jordan are doing that, doing that job for us. And he, if you remember last year, there were some times on third down that Clancy would even sub Cam and, and put in Quentin Powell, you know, because of the passing situations. Um, and, and I think the, the athleticism that those two men bring, I think, are going to help us in there. Cam moving to the mic, kind of being the quarterback of the defense now where, my, uh, where Michael Lutchings was, um, and now having seen those good and seeing that athlete to, into the boundary, having to walk out of the box. Uh, it's it's good to see those two kids out there. Is Stephen Carr making a push for your number two tailback job? Uh, he's playing good. He, you know, he, he's still got a lot to learn. He's still learning the playbook, still learning ball security. But um, the flashes that we've seen has been really impressive. He doesn't remind you of a freshman. Um, really, really confident player. Um, the things that I've been impressed with is how quickly he's picked up pass protection and how obvious he's going to, how obvious his skill set is out of the backfield catching the ball. Um, I don't know if he's put a ball on the ground. Uh, every ball that we've thrown to him, he's caught and, and produced with. Um, still has a long way to go. Still has a long way to go, but we want to see where he's at um, a, as well as you see Rojo and Seth out here doing a great job and even Double D. But uh, um, for a freshman, uh, way ahead of the game. Yes, sir. Does the fact Cam is able to play at the start of the first half or whatever affect how you're preparing? That yeah, that's a good observation, Scott, because one of the things that ends up happening is that Jordan is double training, both at the mic and the dime position. You know, we're, we're able to we're able to get Jordan the valuable reps to be able to um, help us, uh, as well as Levi Jones is kind of double training also. Um, you, you've got four four kids that are, are working, you know, primarily John's working at the dime position, Cam's working at the mic, but you have Jordan and Levi right now double training at both, just in case we get an injury too. We don't want to look up in a game and go, oh gosh, we haven't had guys that didn't know that position, so we're double training. Anything else? Do you have any uh, concerns at any defensive positions? Uh, right, probably the one we talked about right now is, is just the interior linebacker position. Um, you, you know, having those four guys is one of the reasons that you see Buddha being moved back into there. You got Grant Moore who's helping us out right, right there. But um, that that position, and then you know, right now until we get Lopes back, we're really playing with five safeties uh, back there, so about two and a half deep. Uh, look forward to getting Matt Lopes back to make a true three deep. Um, but uh, those two are good depth, but not great. Any separation at wide receiver? You see Michael make some big physical plays and Tyler doing some things and Deontay's down. Is there any separation happening there well, a little I, bit at wide receiver? You can see Pitt. Uh, I, I see Pitt and the experience that he gained, how valuable last year was for him to, to get some experience on the field. It's, a, it's showing out here. Um, Tyler's doing some nice things. He's gotten a lot of reps both in spring and here. He seems to be getting a, a lot more confident. Um, and then, you know, Randall Grimes has shown flashes of, of really being going to be a dynamic receiver. I look forward to getting jo Joseph Lewis back and, and kind of seeing uh, – where uh, how he does, uh, I think he'll be full speed tomorrow. So we'll get to see him and get Josh Moore to Bay Bay back and let let us see him full speed. But um, I, I think Pitt and Tyler are doing a nice job as of right now. All righty, guys.